the UIM H2O Nations Cup heads to Shanghai for the first time in its sixth season as nation battles nation in the Bund Holding Group Grand Prix of Shanghai. Shanghai is a city that needs little introduction. This is one of China's trendiest, most beautiful, and most sophisticated cities, one that balances tradition and modernity, high-tech dazzle, and historical refinement. With 24 million inhabitants, Shanghai is the most populous city in China, and it's also among the most opulent and wealthiest. Broad-lined streets, full of cafes, restaurants, bars, boutiques, and clubs mixed with incredible 19th century European architecture, which in turn melds with the iconic space age skyline that defines the power, youth, prosperity, and sense of purpose of this gem among world cities. This cosmopolitan historical metropolis is an ideal location to host the first ever UIM H2O Nations Cup in China, sponsored by Bund Holding Group and to be raced on the scenic Dishui Lake. Crowds flock to the race area to watch the action, cheer on Team China and get a taste of the thrill and adrenaline of being in an H2O boat with a ride in the two-seater. Now here's a quick recap of the history of the Nations Cup. This is the sixth ever Nations Cup, which first began in 2011. There have been three championship winning teams, Team UAE, which won the first three, then Team Belarus, who took the title in 2014, and finally Team Russia, the 2015 champions. The Nations Cup is a collective effort where team performance trumps individual success. There's a match race event where boats go head to head in elimination rounds, followed by two 20 minute sprint races. All teams race with identical stock boats, engines and props, which is doled out by lottery at the start of the event. Um, the Nation Cup is interesting because there's uh, 20 boats identical to each other, so it's about the driver. So each country presents a team, two boat team, and, and uh, for the points of the two boats, that is how you win overall. There are 15 drivers from eight teams competing in Shanghai. The home team is Team China, entering the Nations Cup for the first time with F1 H2O CTIC China team driver Xiong Ziwei and Chinese Formula 4 champion Ni Hao Jun. The team to beat is Russia, the defending Nations Cup champions. They have two seasoned veterans back racing together, Roman Vandeshev, who was on the Nations Cup Qatar Grand Prix winning team in 2013, and Andrei Panyushkin, who had a win and runner-up finish to clinch the Nations Cup for Team Russia last year. We are ready, we are here to beat everyone. We're gonna defend our champion title, and we will win today. Up against Team Russia is Team USA in their first ever Nations Cup, Featuring two legendary drivers, Scott Gilman, a four-time F1 H2O world champion, and Jay Price, the 2008 F1 H2O world champion. Um, came together at the last minute with myself and Jay Price. You know, we've been retired from Formula One for a while, but we got this opportunity. To <laughs> Run 
on here for for the USA, which we've never had before in the past. So, uh, you know, we're looking forward to it and see what kind of job we can do. But no team has as illustrious a UIM H2O Nations Cup record as Team UAE. Three-time back-to-back winners from 2011 to 2013. This year it features Rashid Altair, who was on the 2012 Nations Cup winning UAE team, and the highly talented youngster Rashid Al Kamzi, who was on the 2013 team, incredibly winning all four sprint races that year. Another newcomer to Nations Cup this year is Team Australia, featuring two youngsters who are ready to do battle with the big boys for national honor. Corey Davil is a Formula 2 champion from Australia, and Brock Cohen, who's currently leading the Australian F3 standings. Back in the Nations Cup is Team Germany, with a talented Jorn Lassig, an F1000 and F4 champion from Frankfurt, and Dietmar Kaiser, a former F1 H2O reserve driver from Blaze Performance Team. Back racing in the Nations Cup is Team Malaysia, featuring the Kadri brothers, Mohamed Afande and Alf Yanto. They're competing in their fourth Nations Cup, and they're out to win it this time. Yeah, we're looking good for this one. We had good success in the previous Nations Cups, the past two, two rounds, and we're looking forward to make a good one for this one as well. Last but not least is Team Italy. Former Nations Cup runners-up, and the team features just one driver in Shanghai, Roberto Lopiano, who is competing in his second Nations Cup. The Bund Holding Group Grand Prix of Shanghai Circuit is 1,800 meters in length, featuring four pins and two 700-meter straights. We have a four-pin circuit here, no right-handers, all left-handers. We have two that's spread apart a little bit, so you need to skate the boat out a bit before you set it in deep. And then you have a, a, a two close together that's not quite a one-pin, but you really need to dig it in and get the boat corrected. It seems basic, but I think in a big field it's going to be a lot more technical than what it looks. Um, it's a few corners which are fairly tight, and um, once again we're all getting used to new boats. And um, you just got to get over the different characters, characteristics which is what we're used to back home. And um, once we sort that out, then we can focus on the course. The time trials would determine both the starting lineup for sprint race one and also the pairings for the match race. The first 20 minutes of the 45-minute time trials would reduce the field to 10 boats, followed by a 15-minute session at the end of which only five boats would remain to fight it out for pole position in the remaining 10 minutes. At the end of the first 20 minutes, it was disappointment for Team China as Ni Hao Jun was just trying to find his bearings, while Zhang Ziwei just missed the cut for the top 10. Uh, in the middle of the section, I lost my trim. I tried to drive with uh, throttle and it's kind of difficult and I'll, I try my best. Also out of the running were Dietmar Kaiser of Germany, Roberto Lopiano of Italy and Alfian Kadri of Malaysia. The second qualifying session, F1 H2O multiple world champion Scott Gilman was the big surprise, unable to make the top five, just out in sixth. Oh, I was good. It's uh, been a while since I've been in a boat, you know, in a race condition, so uh, it's all right. We're top six. Jay's first right now, so hopefully he can keep that up, and it's all about the points. At the end of the session, only five drivers remained. Jay Price, USA. Corey Davel, Australia. Jorn Lasek, Germany. Roman Vandeshev, Russia. And Mohamed Kadri, Malaysia. The final 10 minutes was frantic as Corey Davel nabbed provisional pole at one point before Roman Vandeshev bumped him down. Jay Price was as tenacious as ever, doggedly pursuing top prize. He beat Davel, but he came up short to beat the Russian driver. Roman Vandeshev had pole position. There were some strong competitors with great world champions like Scott Gilman and Jay Price. It's a great honor to race with them. A great experience for me. So to win this today. Today is the day.
is priceless. Kumire. So Jay Price starts second, Davol third, Jorn Lasik fourth, and Mohamed Kadri completing the top five. The match race was the first opportunity for teams to get points on the board in a one-on-one -on -one elimination showdown over an alternating long short course in a best of three matchup. A technical problem saw Jay Price unable to start, which sent Brock Cohen of Australia into the quarterfinals, where he went on to beat the second USA driver, Scott Gilman. Brock Cohen was in the semis, joined by both Russians, Panyushkin and Vandeshev, along with UAE ace, Rashid Al Kamzi. In the first of the semifinals, Brock Cohen continued his brilliant run with yet another win, beating Panyushkin to claim a final spot. In the other semi-final, Russia was disappointed again as Bandeshev was beaten by Al Kamzi. The final showdown was between two young talents, Brock Cohen of Australia and Rashid Al Kamzi of the UAE. It was a hard-fought final, Cohen going all out, but Rashid Al Kamzi's relative experience came to bear as the Emirati driver won two straight wins to clinch the match race title for the UAE. It was very uh, good match race and uh, there are uh, many both uh, strong boats and uh, uh, I get the first. That put the UAE in the driver's seat with 39 points. But the two semi-final showings for the Russians proved very good points-wise, placing them just a point behind the UAE with Australia in third on 33 points, ahead of Team USA in fourth. The arrival of the UIM Nations Cup to Shanghai for the first time was celebrated with a lavish gala dinner. First sprint race of the UIM H2O Bund Holding Group Nations Cup was on. Team UAE had a slight one point lead over Russia and six points over Australia with the USA trailing in fourth after the match race. Could the former champions UAE or Russia defend their dominance? Or could China win one in home waters? Zhang Ziwei was the fastest in practice that morning. Could he and Ni Hao Jun bring the trophy home for China? The starting lineup, Vandeshev has pole for Russia. Next to him are Jay Price, USA, and, and Corey Davil, Australia. The Emiratis and Chinese with a lot of ground to cover. Lopiano in 13th for Italy. The lights go out and the boats are off. Vandeshev leads the 15 boat charge down the long starting straightaway to the commitment buoy as Davil and Price lock horns behind him. Bad start from Scott Gilman as the Emiratis and Panyushkin all leave him in their wake. It's a long drag race to the first turn. German Jorn Lassig pulling ahead of Aussie Corey Davil. Vandeshev first to the buoy. Jay Price goes wide, Corey Davil sees his chance and cashes in to nab second place on the first turn. Jay Price has to endure the Aussie number 17 boat spray as he drops to third. But a big task awaits Davil if he's to catch Vandeshev, the experienced former Nations Cup champion. Panyushkin pushing on the outside, does he have the speed to catch Lasik before the turn buoy? The young German is there, but Panyushkin does it. Jorn Lasik bumped down a position as he's left in the Russian spray. But Lasik's oh. trouble.
troubles aren't over yet as Scott Gilman moves up on the number 15 German boat looking to climb a spot for Team USA. At the end of lap one, Vandeshev dominates the field. The Russian followed by Aussie Corey Dowell, Jay Price third for USA, Panyushkin up and forth with Gilman on his tail, Brock Cohen of Australia in seventh, Rashid Alkamzi back in eighth for UAE. Let's take another look at the start. Alfian Kadri of Malaysia and Ni Hao Jun of China slow off the pontoon, but a great start for Andrei Panyushkin of Russia as the boats hit the start straight away to the commitment buoy. A bad start also for Malaysian Mohamed Kadri in fifth as he struggles to find the acceleration to keep up with the pack and he finds himself trailing at the rear. Back to the race, Vandeshev opening his lead, but Corey Davil in pursuit as he also has to try and hold off the tenacious Jay Price behind him in third. Jorn Lassig's woes continue for Germany as he's overhauled by the second Australian driver, Brock Cohen. Great move from the young Aussie who moves up to sixth. Brock Cohen then sets his sights on tackling the mighty Scott Gilman going from the outside, looking for an opportunity to overtake the American ace, pushing to the max. They go into the turn, Brock Cohen crashes out. What a shame for Team Australia. Cohen was having a great race, but luck and inexperience take their toll. There's the replay. Rashid Alkamzi has to perform a last second swerve to avoid crashing into the Aussie boat. With the number 18 boat out, Australia's Nations Cup title hopes have all but vanished. Um, all right, just really disappointed. I uh, straight from ninth and worked my way up to fifth pretty quickly. And I uh, had one of the Germans behind me and I was just trying to push him back while I was still trying to chase, I think it was Gilman. And um, yeah, just hit a wash, got airborne and just tripped over. So I'm really disappointed with the team. As the Australian boat was taken in, the race continued under a yellow flag. The green flag is up, the race resumes. Jay Price tries to take advantage of the bunch up to get a jump on Corey Davil, but the Australian holds off the American, and there's no change in the top three as Vandeshev leads. But there's plenty of drama further back in a USA versus Russia showdown as Scott Gilman takes the fight to Andrei Panyushkin, and he passes the Russian to move up into fourth behind his teammate Jay Price. Panyushkin tries to strike back on the inside, but Scott Gilman shuts him out. The Americans and Russians having a good race with both their boats in that top five. Jorn Lassig in sixth position for Germany. He comes around race boy number one, and he's smoked by Rashid Alkamzi. The young Emirati driver moves up into sixth after starting in tenth, bumping Lassig down to seventh. The double race winner from the 2013 Nations Cup, Rashid Alkamzi is proving his medal out there for three-time champions Team UAE. Behind Rashid Alkamzi is his teammate Rashid Altair, who also wants to take the German out, but Jorn Lassig holds him off. This is great racing from Corey Dabble, holding his own in second, but his teammate's exit is a big blow. Chinese driver Ni Haojun's luck ran out with just a few minutes left in the race. Haojun's teammate Xiong Ziwei locked horns with Italian Roberto Lopiano at the back. The Italian driver went all out on that 700 meter straight away to race buoy one, but he took out the buoy. The buoy out and time ticking away, the race would end on a yellow flag. Roman Vandeshev is the sprint race one winner for Team Russia. Great result for Corey Davil, runner up for Australia. Jay Price third, his teammate Gilman fourth, and Panyushkin sixth. This is a great result. Really happy I won this, considering all these great legends whom I was racing against. Drivers whom I have a lot of respect for. So the result is extra special. The Russians and the Americans are the big winners. Australia's second place overshadowed by the loss of their other boat. A sixth and eighth place for UAE. Xiong Ziwei salvages some points for China. Straight off the start there, it was almost an accident in turn one. Germany comes straight over on top of us. Um, lucky Jay pulled out, otherwise it could have been a um, disaster there. But We 
kept pushing. I really wanted to get Russia. Unfortunately, I did a few laps under caution, so I didn't get a chance to really put the pressure on. But um, I did, did the job keeping Jay off, I suppose, and, and not crashing. Point standings after sprint race one, Russia goes top on 79 points, UAE in second on 67, with the USA third on 65 points. Can the UAE and USA combine their efforts to topple the Russians ahead of the final and deciding race of the 2016 Nations Cup? In between races, the crowds were treated to a show, while teams had just two hours to prepare and get their boats ready for sprint race two, the deciding race. Australia's Brock Cohen wouldn't make it, the Aussies down to one boat. The main battle would be between USA, Russia, and the UAE. Point situation, I think for us we're in third, but you know, you gotta finish, finish up there, both boats, and uh, it's a lot of close competition right now, so hopefully we can be in the top three by the end final seconds and sprint race two begins. Vandeshev has a great start off the pontoon. Corey Davil of Australia in second position watches on as Vandeshev rockets away to the commitment buoy. This couldn't be a better start for the Russian who opens a lead right from the get-go hoping for another start to finish win for Russia. Behind Vandeshev, Davil and Jay Price continue where they left off fighting for second. Price and Davil are neck and neck behind the Russian. Jay Price nudging ahead on the outside, but Davil holding on on the inside, using that inside lane to his advantage to safeguard his second position for Australia. But it's not over as Jay Price attacks on the outside down the long straight to buoy one. But Davil maintains his lead as Jay gets a wash of his spray and waits for another chance. The top three boats evenly spaced out down that 715 meter straightaway between buoys two and three as Vandeshev leads the field of 13 boats through the first lap on a glorious late afternoon on Lake Dishui, Shanghai. The Russians aren't pressured to take any risks as they know that by just holding their positions, they could claim the Nations Cup title. In a battle for fifth spot, Altair of the UAE and Jorn Lassig of Germany duke it out on the straightaway to buoy one. Another Emirati driver, Rashid Alkamzi, has Andrei Panyushkin of Russia in his sights as he zeroes in on the Russian who's playing it safe and not pushing his boat too hard. Alkamzi goes neck and neck on the outside with Panyushkin as they come around the turn, pulling ahead and waving bye-bye to Panyushkin as Alkamzi takes fourth spot for the UAE. Out in front, Vandeshev is comfortably ahead, enjoying the long flat straights, lapping back markers as he builds on his lead. Corey Davil going strong in second position ahead of Jay Price. Further back, Scott Gilman has set his sights on the number 19 Russian boat, Andrei Panyushkin, as Gilman tries to climb up the field to support his teammate and get crucial points for Team USA. Gilman going all out to catch Panyushkin in fifth, but the Russian has got good top speed and holds Gilman off. Team Malaysia's Alfian Kadri just trying to hang in there and get a points finish for his team as Vandeshev moves up alongside him, lapping the Malaysian boat as he continues to open up a distance between him and Corey Davil. Pushing the top three is Emirati ace Rashid Alkamzi, an up-and-coming talent on the Formula Racing Tour and a former double sprint race winner. Jay Price also trying to find his way through the back markers, dealing with dirty water that makes it hard to find the speed to take the fight to Davil as Team USA look on. Jorn Lassik of Germany encounters trouble in lap eight and he has to motor back to the pontoon. Shame for Team Germany, but Dietmar Kaiser is still in it. The lead boats continue to weave their way around back markers, this time Vandeshev lapping Italian Roberto Lopiano as Vandeshev maintains his comfortable lead. Alfian Kadri's troubled race for Team Malaysia comes to a grinding halt as he exits the circuit. The 20 minutes were up and it was down to the final lap as number 17 Corey Davil of Australia made a last gasp effort to catch Vandeshev, cutting the Russians lead down significantly. Vandeshev held the Aussie upstart off successfully turn after turn. Corey Davil didn't give up and didn't back down, taking the fight to the Russian right down to the end as they enter the... Final 
straight away. But it was too late. Roman Mandeshev is the Sprint Race 2 winner. Devil runner up again. Jay Price third. What a result for Team Russia. Race 2 results. Alkamzi in fourth gets 18 points ahead of Panyushkin. Rashid Altair also nabs 14 points. And Lopiano completes the race for 12 points. Uh, to hold Jay off the, that lap, he was right beside me. He wasn't giving me any room whatsoever, but to hold him off, I, was, I can't be unhappy with that. A lot of hard racing there. I didn't ever give up. I pushed, I pushed. Just didn't have the right prop for today's event. I think our team did really well. We collected some good points. We'll see how we wind up in the end of it all, but a uh, really good race. I'd like to thank everyone that made this happen. Our team, our sponsors, and team manager. This is a great result. And a big thank you to Shanghai. This was wonderful. <laughs> team Russia defend their Nations Cup crown. Team USA runners up by just one point ahead of third place Team UAE. Australia fourth, then Germany, Malaysia, China, and Italy. That brings to a close the first ever UIM H2O Bund Holding Group Grand Prix of Shanghai. See you next year.